Paul, thank you so much for volunteering. Well, arms behind your back uh, for coming this morning. So, um, so basically, I know you've lived in this city all your life. We've had a conversation about that. You know, Brighton, born and bred. Um, you even lived in the same um, council estate as my father did, going back 90-odd years. Well, not you, but my father. Um, and uh, you, you were a CAP client, and you're no longer a CAP client, but I know you've still got lots of connections with us. So can you just briefly say and tell us you know, how you became introduced to Christians Against Poverty? Well, um, I was struggling physical and mental health problems. Um, I got myself into a lot, a lot of debt, financial. Um, and things started going, spiraling out of control. I was, uh, wasn't eating properly, this, that and the other. I couldn't afford the food because I was addicted to alcohol and other stuff. Um, and I phoned up Brighton Council to see if I could get any help with the food. And they put me in touch with uh, Brighton City Mission, um, who started sending me food parcels delivered. This man turned up my doorstep. This was 18 months ago with a big box of food and a few kind words. And in it, there was a little leaflet and it said, uh, Cap, Christians Against Poverty. And I thought, well, I was, by this time I was seven, just over £7,000 in debt with utility bills, um, phone bills, TV licence, water, you name it, all of it. And I kept looking at it, I kept putting it down. Usually I'd tear something like that up and use it for a filter in my cigarettes. Sorry about that. Um, and one morning I sat there and I'd run out of cigarettes. I just thought this can't get any worse. My biggest vice cigarettes. And I just looked at the number and I thought, I'm just going to call him and see what happens. And I phoned up and I was put in touch with a lady called Tina. A lovely uh, Irish lady who none of this can understand her. I did. Uh, she invited me to come down and we went through a few things. I was a bit worried, nervous. Because um, religion is not my thing, don't get me wrong, but um, I didn't want to feel hypocritical asking for help. But it, it took a lot for me to reach out and ask for help. I'd done it, and when I, once I'd done it, I thought, oh, what have I done? And this lady said, come down and see me. So I came down, drank gallons of tea. She's uh, quite humorous. And we just went through step by step. I came down every week for 12 weeks. And that was... <laughs> nine months ago, I think, eight, nine months ago. I'll sit here now, talking to you now, a bit nervous, but um, I don't owe that, no one, nothing. Yeah. I'm, uh, I'm, as you can see, I'm back to eating properly. <laughs> uh, yeah, all's good. I don't owe no, no, no one any money. Um, I don't have to avoid the door anymore, or the phone, or letters going through the door take my head out of the sand and you know, just, just grab life by the scruff of the neck now and just get on with it. That's brilliant, Paul. Thank you so much. Now, I was going to ask you four or five questions. You already answered them, so I don't need to ask them, which is fantastic. Um, one other little question was, apart from CAP, how else did you find or receive help from Holland Road as well on, on your journey out of debt? Well, once I came down with the debt side of things, I was receiving food parcels, as you know. You delivered a few. Steve did too. And um, I started coming to the Monday lunch club a couple of times. And on the way out of the door, they were saying, don't go empty handed. And they were sending me home with bits of food, you know, to see me through the week to my next benefit payment and stuff. And it's just, it's just gone from there. I'll come down. There was a story about your phone, wasn't there? There was a oh, story about your phone. Oh, that's these people. Yeah. Axe Axe um, I lost my phone. And I'm not. A, I'm, a, I'm quite a technophobe, but everything I know and I have is in my phone. All my, my children's contacts, family, blah, blah, blah. And I lost it. I was absolutely devastated. And I sat indoors for about a week because I didn't know what to do. No one could get in touch with me. I found out once I got my phone back, it was smashed to pieces. Um, I, pl I asked Neil and Steve, and they put me in touch with these people here. And uh, they donated £120. So I could get a second-hand phone, which I've got here. But it wasn't the same. I'm thinking, oh, God, oh, no, no nothing on it. And I, when I came down here, I met a guy. Was it Rick? Yeah. Uh, another cap client. We got talking, and it turned out I'm a technophobe, and he was an absolute whiz. He went, come here. He went, put me. He said, it's all saved on the cloud. I'm, I'm, I'm looking, I'm, what's, the, what's the cloud? Anyway, this guy, within 10 minutes, he's gone boom, 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 boom. And my phone just lit up and 
I've had about a thousand missed calls because I'd lost her a week. And yeah, so it was down to these people. That, Okay. Yeah. yeah, so just for those of you who aren't aware, we partner obviously with lots of food banks. We also partner with two big charities, one's local, one's national. Acts 435, which you would have read about in the newsletter, St. Bernard's uh, Charity, which is a local charity, a church charity. And this year alone, this church has helped raise and give away nearly £34,000 to local people. Oh, come on, give us a round of applause for that. So, one last question, one last question. Um, what would you say to people sitting here today, um, you're live on Facebook, you're live on YouTube, I bet you never thought that 18 months ago when you came. <laughs> <laughs> so, what would you say to anybody here who's sitting here anxious about their bills, about debts, or a common aid? What would you say to them? Don't do what I did, burying your head in the sand, it don't work. Get your head out of it, put your arms out and ask, reach. And it's there. The help's there. I didn't, I didn't know all this help was there. And if it wasn't for that, I'd be quite honest, I probably wouldn't have much. I've got my own council flat, been there 10 years after a lot of problems. Uh, I, really, I was that, that close to losing everything. If I'd lost my flat, that would have been it. I'd have gone back to square one when I was a kid, sort of, you know, teenager. So, um, yeah, thanks very much to Cap and the day to Tina, Neil and Steve, especially.